Welcome to the broadcast. We're continuing our series titled, Come Into the Awe. Let us open our Bibles now to the seventh chapter of Genesis. Chapter 7, verse 1. Then the Lord said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. May God have a blessing to the hearers of his word. You know, let's note verse 1 of chapter 7. And by the way, this passage is the first record in the Bible of God's invitation to come. You know, that's how the, the verse start out. Come into the ark. A invitation come and God gives this first invitation here the final instance of this word of invitation is recorded in the last book of the Bible which is Revelation 22 and 17 and the spirit and the bride say come and let him that hears say, come. And let him that is a thirst, come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Oh, praise God. I wonder this morning, have you accepted the invitation? The invitation yet stands. Come unto me. Jesus is saying to each of us, especially for those who don't know him as a savior, the invitation, come unto me. Come into the ark. Oh, hallelujah. We will be looking at this morning Noah, how Noah was obedient to the difficult task that God gave him. He was obedient when appointed to a hard task that God had given him. Bible's open. Let's pick it up in chapter 6 of Genesis. Note verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Oh yes, praise God. Let's note verse 14 of chapter 6. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood, make rooms in the ark, and cover it inside and outside with pitch. Mm. Now, we're not just building a little vessel. And I said vessel, that's correct. You that's calling the ark a boat, it wasn't a boat. It wasn't a ship. Find you in, in those instructions. There was no rudder. There was no stern. No. No navigation device. No. No engine. No. None of these things you'll find in Genesis as instructions that God gave Noah. No. Why? Good question. Why is because it was not a boat. It was not designed by God to be a boat. 
And I know we said boat. It wasn't a boat. It wasn't a ship. It was designed to be a vessel. What type of vessel? A floating device. It was designed to float. That was it. Don't complicate it. It was designed to float. So God gives Noah this difficult assignment. You think about it. He didn't have machine saws. He didn't have rattles and, and all these modern tools, uh, a, a skill saw, a table saw a planer, and all these things that woodworkers use in their craft. Noah did not have these things. So this was a difficult task in those days. And notice the magnitude of this vessel that God is giving Noah as an assignment to do. 450 feet long, 75 feet high, which is three stories, and 45 feet wide. Wow! Now, some of us, if we was given this assignment by God, you would throw your hammer down, you would throw your hands up, you would take your apron and untie and throw it in the air, maybe step on it a few times, and you will run for your life. Come on now, let's, let's just be honest this morning. We will run for our lives. But our whole point this morning, Noah was obedient when he was appointed this hard task, this assignment. My ask you this morning, and I'm not going to tell anybody, but are you obedient? Are you obedient to God? Are you obedient to his word? Are you obedient in every area of your life. Uh-oh. Have you completed the assignments given to you? Well, verse 14 of chapter 6, when God gave him those instructions to make yourself an ark, and, and he told him to cover inside and outside with this pitch, copal, this tar-like substance uh, that will keep the water out. Hmm? Uh, he, Noah, was obedient. Note further, verse 15, when the Lord said, and this is how you should make it. The length of the ark shall be three cubits, 100 cubits. It's width 50 cubits. It's height 30 cubits. I told you, 450 feet by 75 by 45. You shall make a window for the ark, and you shall finish it to a cubic from above and set the door of the ark in its side. You shall make it with lower second and third decks. Now, I don't see nowhere in these instructions where the Lord is telling now first, go to carpenter school. Uh-oh. Make sure you pass with a passing grade and, and serve your apprenticeship and then go out and I want you to build this all. No. You know what I found out? If we are obedient, listen to me real closely this morning. Whatever assignment that God gives us, 
He's already have seen us from start to finish if we'll be obedient. He'll move obstacles out the way. And you know, sometimes we fret over this stuff. But I don't see no fretting, neither should we. If we be obedient, and I'm a witness, if we are obedient, God put things in place. Things begin to unfold. That's right. Remember now, come on. God is the landlord. He's the sea lord. He's the Lord of lords. He can do everything. Huh? When he speak to the wind, the wind obey. When he speak to the sea, the sea obey. Everything obeys the true and living God. So why we got to be so hard-headed? Come into the ark. Note then, verse 17, he said, Behold, I myself am bringing floodwaters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. Verse 18, But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, your sons' wives with you. Verse 19, and of every living thing of flesh, you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female of the birds after their kind. Verse 20, of animals after their kind and of every creeping thing of the earth after its kind. Two of every kind will come to you to keep them alive. Now, look at verse 20 real close. Because, as I just stated, if we will be obedient to God's command, be obedient to God's word, he'll work things out. He will bring it to pass. You know, a lot of these assignments is a test of our faith. Huh? Will we trust him? Will we trust him when we don't even see it? Huh? You recall when Abraham was called, Genesis 12, the scripture said he obeyed God and he was going to the place. Did you pay attention to the scripture verse? Not knowing. Uh-oh, preacher, you know, messed up. See, that's some of our problem. We got to know all the details. You know what y'all say. Give me the ins and outs. I want to know. I want to know up front. Well, God don't operate like that. He tells us what he want us to do, and he want us to obey and as you walk in faith, being obedient to what he command, each time you take a step toward doing what he commands of you, things begin to fall in place. And then you'll see a little bit further. And as you move on, you see a little bit further. And as you move on, you see a little bit further. Oh, hallelujah. You ought to just praise him right now. Now, did you know in verse 20? Let me, let me point this out before we move on. It says when he gave Noah the instructions of how to get these beasts. And did you pay close attention? One male one female of every species. Now, I don't know about you, but now, I know some of you are animal lovers. You love every animal out there. But see, I can tell you about me. I have a problem with certain animals. You know, I just, you know, I think when it came to the skunks, I'd have just said, now, Lord, how, how I'm going to bring them in? 
and Lord, uh, I don't know, those, those leopards and tigers, them some big cats. I, I, I just, I don't know. I, I think they'd have been talking to my, my shoes cause I'd have been no ran up out of them shoes. No, no, certain animals, you know, I, I go visit them in the zoo cause I know they in the cage. Oh, come on. Y'all better, y'all better come on with me this morning. Huh? But pay attention to verse 20. You know, y'all put all this on Noah, but no, 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 no. Verse 20 says, read it. Let's read it again. The very end there. Two of every kind will come to you. What God is saying here, and sometimes y'all read right over it. God was saying, Noah. I'm going to cause all those animals from wherever they at uh, in the surrounding area or wherever they live or they habitat, I'm going to cause them to come to this ark. They're going to come to you. Oh, hallelujah. Ain't that wonderful? I'm going to I'm gonna put the power. I'm I'm gonna speak and cause that. I, I I I boy, the Lord must have had to talk some monkey talk, some donkey talk, some some hippopotamus talk. However, he got in their mindset, y'all. They all came. One male, one female came to the ark. See, obedience is the way. You know, we just ought to make up our mind. I'm just going to obey. Obedience. Y'all, that's the key. Oh, if we would just obey. You know, he said in the New Testament, he asked the question, why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? Oh, my we ought to obey. You know, that's one four-letter word we don't like. Now, see, some of you use four-letter words you shouldn't be saying, but that's one four-letter word you need to, you need to hold dear. Obey. O-B-E-Y. Obey. Why is that such a difficult thing? For so many of us, we simply will not obey. Well, look at verse 22. You see it? Thus Noah did. What did he do? He obeyed. What did Noah do? He did all them things from verse 14 to 21, just as God instructed. The scripture tells us in verse 22, Noah did. <laughs> you see that? It said, thus Noah did. What did he do? He obeyed. Come on now. Noah obeyed. Thus nor did, look at verse 22, according to all that God commanded him, so he did. That's right. Don't complicate it. He did whatever the Lord told him to do. Now, let's bring this to 2023. Let's bring this and ask each one of us, even myself, are we doing what the Lord has commanded of us? The task, the assignment he's given us. He told some of you just to share the good news with your neighbor concerning Jesus' birth, his death, his resurrection. He said, share it with a co-worker. He said, share it with a complete stranger. He said, share your testimony. Are you obeying? Well, Noah did. What about you? You know, I looked at this. I asked myself, boy, it's important that we obey. 
Oh, hallelujah. Well, let's go to chapter 5. It's chapter 7. Chapter 7. And let's look at verse 5. And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. Praise God. Now let's ask ourselves a question. Are we doing all that God has commanded us to do? Are we doing it or not? Let's be honest. Are we doing Some of us ain't even put forth any effort to get started. Shame, shame, shame. But verse 5 of chapter 7, it said, Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. What is that saying? That's right. Noah obeyed. Noah was obedient when appointed to this hard task. This hard assignment, and the scriptures say, he did according to all that the Lord commanded him. Let's note some other verses as we prepare to close this morning. First of all, if you note in the, and you can turn there, listen and just jot these scriptures down. And, and, and read them. Some of them I'm just giving you a portion of it. But in 1 Samuel 15 and 22. Dealing with uh, King Saul. And, and Samuel who was the prophet. And, and, and here Samuel says to Saul. Telling him uh, that obedience is better than sacrifice to obey is better than sacrifice if we turn in the new testament to acts chapter 5 verse 29 here the apostles uh is speaking uh the day of pentecost had come the lame man at the gate was healed and they Asking the disciples who they finna put them in jail and what have you. And they telling them don't teach no more in Jesus name. Peter and the disciples, they responded in Acts 5, 29. And they said, we ought to obey God rather than men. You know, we, we, we got some cases like that now. Uh, are we going to obey the law concerning same-sex marriages? Or are we going to obey God? See, I choose to obey God. I can't get in line with everything else. And especially when it's contrary to God's word. And I ain't scared of y'all. I ain't scared of nobody when I'm standing on God's word. Oh, hallelujah. We, I've faced it on jobs. I've faced it in communities. I've faced it in City Hall. No, I'm standing on the word of God. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Oh, hallelujah. Romans chapter 6, verse 16. Do you not know? Paul asked this question. To whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of, of obedience leading to righteousness. What is he saying? I'm glad you asked. He's saying we are slaves to one or the other. We are obedient either to God 
Are we obedient to Satan and sin? Are we obedient to God and righteousness? Now you know whose side you on. Oh, hallelujah. Colossians 3.20. Look at this one. And ain't this a word for the day? Children, obey your parents in all things. And then he says some. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well pleasing to the Lord. Mm. <laughs> I see they got we got it turned around. We we are obeying the children. The children got a a, a, a leash around the parents' neck. The children are in charge. Sad, sad situation. But the word said, children, obey your parents in all things. One final one there is in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Obey those who rule over you. And be submissive, for they watch out for your souls. As those who must give account, let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that will be unprofitable for you. What is he saying here? He's trying to tell us, the Hebrew writer, that we ought to obey those who are in leadership, who they, they rule over us. Especially your spiritual leaders, they're watching for your souls. And he said you need to be submissive to your pastors, to your elders, to your bishops and overseers. And he said, because they're watching for your souls. And he said, and they got to guess what? Whether you know it or not, they got to give an account for you and what they teaching you. So he then say, well, let them do so with joy. You know, it's a joy when the leaders see the people obeying. But then he said, you cause them a lot of grief when they see you not doing as you were instructed. You being disobedient. You 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 make the, the leader you you put him in a terrible spot. Sometimes he going through and he said, you know, Lord, I don't know if it's worth it. Because these people, you know, Moses even did. The, these people so hard-headed and stiff-necked. They don't follow no instructions. They don't read their Bible. They don't study their Sunday school lesson. They don't pray. They don't tell a testimony. They won't witness they won't invite nobody to church. And the list go on. He said, well, when you're not obedient to them that have the rule of you, you're causing them a lot of grief. And they the one got to give an account for you. Moses tells us he was a meek man. Moses was meek. And he just wanted the children to obey and they gave him a hard time. But as we close this morning, come back next week and we're going to look at, as we come into the ark, we're going to look at how Noah remembered the Lord and how he was delivered from death. So please obey as Noah did and remember to give thanks.